When I was a kid, I was enthralled with Spencer Tracy's Jekyll and Hyde. Now, I'm 12 or 13 years old when this film came out. And for the next 20 years, I've got those pictures in my head of the magnificence of that classic film. I was enthralled with the tennis match, the good and the evil, the good and the evil. And of course, my trigger up here went funny and not, funny and not. One day I decide, what if I could take the basis of that and do a kind of comedy musical? I met a man on a train going from New York to Chicago who came over and talked to both Dean and I about, you know, when you, uh, uh, the uh, actually the two of you were uh, very, very nice. That was in 1955. I couldn't get that voice out of my head. Mr. Warshevsky. Had you learned anything in your first class, and I am in reference to the elementary class, you might not be in such dire need of learning now. Your request is denied. Lewis, as an actor, was fascinated by the mannerisms and the voice, and he was like really studying this guy as he's talking to him, and I guess he talked to him for hours. He was modeling it after somebody he actually met that was the squarest nerd on the planet. It gave him just such a great comedic latitude. Everything from the voice inflections to the walk to the total nebbish not being able to do anything, but then at the same time, he's a brilliant scientist. Yes, oh yes. I knew that that was the infinite perfect. Seven weeks and 13 experiments have gone by with little or no strides made. But today I'm certain my formula will work. So certain that I plan trying it on myself tonight. I wrote seven screenplays and threw them all away. I then got Bill to come aboard with me. Bill wrote number eight and number nine with me. I went to number one. Bill and I went over it and I shot the first script. During this period in Lewis's career, he was known pretty much for the wild slapstick comedies that were extremely popular. Nutty Professor was a departure. Basically, the thinking of the day was there were only two entities in Hollywood that were making movies for young audiences. That was Walt Disney and Jerry Lewis. So Nutty Professor wasn't really quite as much for the young kids as was Aaron Boy or Ladies Man or things like that. So it was breaking outside the formula, which scared a few people. Paramount, at first, was a little skeptical as to releasing it, uh, saying, you know, this might scare children. Well, Lewis said to them, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs might have scared children. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't think Disney lost money. So he convinced the others that the project would be successful, and it was very successful. And interestingly enough, critics started to take notice of Lewis as being a very good actor. Actually, these chemical formulas, which are processed and motivated by the electron group. Actually, The Nutty Professor was a highly dramatic movie, in the most literal sense of the word. Well, no, you shouldn't be upset. The dramatics of kelp are unseen. They aren't really in the foreground. You see kelp as this cute guy. Well, when you wrap up someone with that title, you don't look beyond it. 
I had to bring him to the screen with very little effort. You put a little more effort in that and you've spoiled the innocence of the man and you make him something he's not. Can I be of any assistance, Professor Kell? Jerry sent me the script and the character's name was Stella Payne. And I came back to him and I said, right Jerry, I love the script, but I don't want to be a pain. Can you think of another name for me? And so it came to be Stella Purdy. And I like that a lot. In the movie, you see this gorgeous, voluptuous female. But the underpinnings of that woman was so solid, so good, so kind, so generous and so loving to everybody. She is flawless. She still is. She's a flawless human being. It's a very difficult role, more so than people probably realize. Stella Stevens has to sort of do this delicate balance between being noticeable and part of the action and also backing off just enough so that she doesn't get in the way of the action. And the only reason I've gone this far, I think, is because when you meet someone who's like nothing you've ever met before, your curiosity gets stirred up. Well, mister, this is one kitten that won't be smitten by that little old devil. To be the leading lady opposite Jerry Lewis at that time, who was the king of Paramount Lot. and. Uh, he would snap his fingers and things would appear on the set. Hello, I'm Stella Stevens. I'm sitting on the set of the new Jerry Lewis production, The Nutty Professor. It stars Del Moore and Kathleen Freeman and Les Brown and his great band. Ow! Oh, he's in it too. Wally Kelly, the cinematographer, did the most beautiful glowing close-ups of me I think I've ever had in any movie. He worked at Paramount as a special effects photographer, and I moved him up to cinematographer. Wallace Kelly was the best cinematographer in Hollywood. Now watch, baby. Every move a picture. There are a lot of people who believe that Buddy Love is Jerry Lewis's attack on Dean Martin because Buddy Love is this semi-skilled crooner who is mean to everyone around him. You know, that's not Dean Martin at all. That wasn't Dean Martin at any time in his career as far as I know. And Jerry Lewis has gone on record as saying it has nothing to do with Dean Martin. This could never be Dean. I love Dean more than I did the next breath I took. When people asked me what my love was, I said, we'd just look at my sons, open them up, and put my partner in the middle, and you'll know what love is. I should stay away, but what can I? I hear your name, and I'm a flame. A flame with such a burning desire that only your kids can put out the... If anything, Lewis is admitting that this is his own subconscious. Everybody's got a Jekyll and Hyde personality, and this was his Mr. Hyde. 74, three. The horrible thing that Dr. Jekyll had turned into was a demon. They have very good taste. I'm glad. Would be a shame to waste that genius of yours on the riffraff. This was actually a quite sharp and beautiful guy who was not very nice to people. If you're good and you know it, you might as well not beat around a bush, true? <laughs> well, I always say. I didn't say. I know you didn't I say. I forgot. <laughs> I know. Ma! This was a conglomeration of every unkind, nasty son of a bitch I had seen all of Grand my life. Lara. The man who says, waitress, where the hell is my coffee? The man that doesn't open the door for a lady. The man that takes the cab in the rain from this woman who had her hand on the handle. Hey, you don't sound exactly too thrilled to serve the leader. Hello, room service I called an hour ago. Oh, it's on its way, drop it's dead, you and your family. To serve his royal lowest. Hey, you're cute. Like a black widow spider. Shut your mouth and just take the order, lady. Now, if you don't want this cocktail shaker to become a part of your gums, mix the drink, shut your mouth and pay attention. Is that I've clear? seen this. I've watched it all of my life. I've watched the human condition because it has served me to know what I do and the why of what I do in terms of comedy. What's uh, your moniker, kid? What do they call you? Mortimer? Harvey? Norman? Homer? Which is it? You may call me Dr. Warfield, young man. Del Moore did some of his best work with Lewis. He usually was best as the harried authority figure that had to deal with the outrageousness that Lewis was creating around him. 
You blew out the wall of the science building. Well, actually... All of the wall, Kelp. Well, it was good for the summer. Del and my dad were very, very close friends. Delmore was the most avid fisherman you ever met in your life, and he used to spend a lot of time on my dad's boat. And oh, he just loved to torture Delmore. I mean, my dad would throw things to him. As Del was standing on the dock, he'd take a brand new camera and throw it just past him, so Del couldn't get it. I mean, and it would go in the water, and he would. The poor man would have a heart attack. He was supposed to be this center, this force, this more conservative structure that was slowly whittled down by uh, the Lewis uh, character shenanigans. What do you say about perfection? What do you need to say about someone who brought such a command of his self? Be or not, you know Hamlet, Prince, Royal Court. I don't think there was ever a time when Jerry Lewis got the respect that he genuinely deserved. I guess it's because comedy is looked upon as, that's just funny stuff, that's just something funny. Prince and Hamlet. Hamlet, get up there, Doc. Oh, I got it now, now I got it. Yes. You're going to be beautiful. Yes. Let it rip. Ah. Comedy's very, very hard to do. You know, somebody like Laurence Olivier can uh, do Shakespeare beautifully. I don't think he could do a good fall down the stairs. Drama's easy. You get up in the morning, look in the paper, and go to work. If it's a drama. If it's comedy, your heart better be on fire with spirit and passion and can't wait. Miss Lemon, get Professor Kelp in here immediately. Uh, but Dr. Warfield, I think that Professor Kelp has a class right now. He had a class. Can't you hear? Now get it! If you could get Kathleen Freeman, you've got gold. You can go to the bank with whatever you were doing. Forget it, lady. Ah! Get she was the head of the Jerry Lewis troupe. She did 13 films with my dad. She was just his perfect foil. Lewis tells of a time that he had to rewrite a scene the night before after it had been rehearsed. I give her two and a half pages at seven in the morning. She's in makeup and she's looking at them. I printed take one. That's the only compliment I can tell you I gave. I printed take one. She didn't miss a beat, a comma, or a period. Here it is, kids. Are you tired of being a square? Are you tired of a dull, dull, dull existence? Well, for one dollar, the tenth part of a sawbuck, try Kelp's Cool Tonic! Howard Morris is perfect in Nutty Professor because he's a little guy and he's also a very funny guy and he can play the little wimpy guy getting pushed around by his wife, uh, Elvia Allman, and uh, then later on after drinking the potion, he's the big strong he-man who's pushing her around. It was a perfect piece of casting on uh, Lewis's part. He, you two, can be the life of the party. The life of the party! He's right, kids. It's a gasser. Magazines like Cahier du Cinema and writers like Jean-Luc Godard and Francois Truffaut were embracing Lewis as a great filmmaker right around the time of The Nutty Professor. That's where the French Love Jerry thing came from because what our newspaper critics couldn't see in his work, somehow Francois Truffaut, Jean-Luc Godard and people of that nature were understanding his fellow filmmakers. It's wonderful to be in something that is so special to so many people. I would like to simply puff up with pride <laughs> because I was a part of that and I do agree it might have been his best film. It was such a labor of love. The film came first. My baby, the Nutty Professor, came first. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the world's greatest everything, the best dressed, the swingless performer, and one of the nicest guys in the whole world. Whew. Just made it. <laughs>